you've come to the right place. If you're looking to create, launch, and scale a high value online training program. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I'm the co-founder of Lifter LMS, the most powerful learning management system for WordPress. Stay to the end. I've got something special for you. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. I'm joined by a special guest. His name is Mark Westgard. He's from the incredible form plugin, WS Form. Welcome to the show, Mark. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Mark and I just caught up in person recently at WordCamp US. It was a lot of fun. And I wanted to get him out here in front of you all and look at uh, his story in the WordPress community, but also WS Form and the integration he's doing with uh, Lifter LMS related to it. But maybe take us to the beginning. You know, there's so many different form options. And how did you kind of come in on the D- WS Form? Like, what's the angle there? And and what year did what year was that that you you started? That was I would want to say about four years ago now. So around about 2018. Um, I've had a, a web agency for about 26 years. So I'm, uh, you know, the Netscape navigator type of guy <laughs> from way, way back. And um, yeah, we, we adopted WordPress, I want to say, um, probably about eight to 10 years ago. It was, I was introduced to it, to it by my team. Um, they went off to a work camp, came back, told me all about it. We adopted it as a, a, a new, basically a content management system for our customers. Um, I used to write um, content management software many years ago. I actually wrote uh, one of Sony's first websites. Um, and they wanted a, a way by which to, to modify products on their website. So uh, adopting WordPress was a good move for us because you've got an existing platform there, uh, open source. We really enjoyed working with it. And I've always had a sideline business. I've always had something on the side that I work with. I used to own a, uh, a wedding company that used to do wedding websites and wedding planning. And um, we were one of the first companies out there to give bride, brides and grooms the ability to actually build an online wedding website. And we originally tried to go direct to consumer with it, found it was absolutely saturated. And uh, in the end, we white labeled it and sold it through Condé Nast, who, who owned Brides Magazine. They do like Vanity Fair Magazine, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, once we got them signed up, we signed up you know, the rest of the wedding planet out there. Um, and it was a, you know, a good time. And that was kind of my forte into the, the licensing world. And then a few, you know, few years later, I wanted to get back into it again and decided, look, let's build a WordPress plugin. So spoke to the team, said, you know, where, where are we having challenges? And forms came up. And um, it was really just a case of we wanted a, an easier platform for building complex forms. Um, yeah, contact us forms. There's plenty of plugins out there for doing that. But the types of clients that we work with were a little bit more advanced. They had um, more of a complex need for a form. And building those things were a challenge. So, you know, you usually had to install two, three, four plugins to to get it to do what you wanted. Starting, it was always a challenge. Um, So off we went and decided, okay, we're going to build a form plugin, which we thought was going to be a five, six month project. And here we are still developing it to this day um, and growing it and building it. Um, But uh, yeah, we've, we've, it's it's definitely a, it's a saturated area of WordPress. There's a, a lot of WordPress form plugins out there. Um, but we've been fortunate that we've been picked up and we're, you know, slowly gaining traction in the WordPress world. So that's kind of the story. It's, it was really came from a need from an agency to, to build a, a better form platform. I know my mind was kind of opened as, a, as I got into websites and WordPress of what forms can actually do and like what they are and what they're capable of. Because at first you just think of like the contact form or mm. a comment form or something like that. But what you mentioned an advanced use of a form. Like, what are some way non obvious ways that a beginner may not realize a form could power? Yes. Yeah, so you've got things like, um, obviously, your your basic contact us form, but then you've got things like maybe a sales inquiry form, where if you're an agency, you could potentially ask a lot of questions before the person actually can send that inquiry through to you. So. Um, you got things like conditional logic that enable you to switch things on and off on a form um, so that you can make the form 
appear smaller and it will grow over time. So things like maybe an order form for a complex product um, is, is another, another idea. Um, we also integrate in with WooCommerce as well. So you can put our forms on WooCommerce products. So you can actually use a form to customize a product on the front end. So that might be something like choosing a color, uh, adding some text to a product, uh, even signing off on a custom product before it's submitted through to the cart on WooCommerce. So that's you know another solution. Um, and then we have a lot of people using it for quite complex calculations. So maybe they want to order something online that requires kind of width, height, length, material types, and things like that. Um, and that's another area that a complex form can come in to, to do that. Um, and then you've got the back end of it as well, which is where's that data going to go? You know, a regular contact us form is going to send you an email, um, but you may want to tie it into Salesforce or to HubSpot or to Groundhog. Um, you may want to push it through to MailChimp. You may want to create a post in WordPress. And these are all the types of things that WS Form can do. So um, a lot of form plugins out there will have like a notification system where you can send an email to somebody. Uh, we have an action system where you can add as many different actions as you want. So you can send as many emails out as you want. You can even run custom PHP. So you can run a WordPress hook. Um, do pretty much anything that you want with it. So um, the, the, the challenge with the plugin has been to build a platform that is diverse enough to build as pretty much anything that you want with it. Um, but we've tried to do that as much as possible within a no-code environment. So really the idea is for a developer to be able to build a complex form very quickly. Um, so, you know, we just to give you an example, we, we used to charge $600 to maybe $2,000 for a form because we were custom building those forms and it would take quite a lot, a lot of time. Um, with this platform, you can build those complex forms very, very quickly. Um, and it just speeds up the process and just makes it easier. But uh, I think there's a tendency with contact task forms for them to be a little bit neglected in the, the WordPress development cycle, um, but they're just a vital part of getting communication from your customers. So if we can make that easier for people to build, I think all the better. That's awesome. And I'm on your website now and there's 60 plus integrations. Yeah. I know you're, I know you're working on a Lyft LMS integration as of this recording. Those yep. of you live, but if you're listening in your earbuds, it's likely already out. Yep. Tell us your philosophy around integrations and then tell us about what your plans for Lifter are specifically. Sure. Yeah. So what we wanted to do with our integrations is go a bit further than uh, what's currently available. So m most form plugins will take the content of the form and then push that through maybe as a contact in MailChimp, maybe as a contact in, I don't know, Pipedrive, whatever it may be. What we wanted to do is go full bi-directional on it. So you can push data to these integrations and suck data out and populate a form with that data. Um, but we also, on pretty much every integration that we have, we have a template system built in for them. So to give you an example with MailChimp, you would click on MailChimp and you would look at the templates within that MailChimp. Uh, and what it will do is it will pull down your lists from MailChimp and build a template for every list you have. And then you just click on that template and WS Form builds a form for you. So it'll, it'll put all the main fields in there, like name, email, any custom fields that you've got, any tagging that you've got in MailChimp, and that's all built automatically. So um, again, speeding up that process. So you don't have to manually build that form out, pull the fields in, do the mapping, testing, et cetera. Um, it's, it's all done in one click. Um, the other thing that we have is a, a debug console, which comes up when you're developing the forms and it appears at the bottom of the screen. It's a little bit like the browser inspector. And what that enables you to do, we have a populate button on there, which is actually one of the first things we ever built for WS form was this magic populate button. And when you click on that, it fills the form out for you. So mm -hmm. it'll put example data in there. It'll put example telephone numbers. It will choose colors. It'll actually do signatures for you, everything in one click. Um, so you just go populate and submit, and it'll submit that form so you can test that form super quick with that integration. So really try to go to town on those integrations. Most of them are OAuth, and um, if your um, viewers aren't aware of what OAuth is, it's just a super easy way of connecting uh, one system to another. So they can just go connect to MailChimp. It'll go off to MailChimp. They'll log in, say, yes, I want to connect to WS Form, and that's it. So there's no messing around with API keys or anything like that. We just try and make that, that process simple. 
So with Lifter, um, we want to make sure that we've got all of the core functionality that's there that you have with other form integrations. Um, so you're going to be able to basically lock um, courses with, with forms. So, and you'll be able to put any of the fields that we support on that form. So if you want to do signatures, repeaters, any kind of e-commerce, that's all going to be wrapped into it. Um, so you'll be able to build pretty much anything you want and then tie that in with Lifter. Um, and then we also have um, user management functionality as well. So you can do user registration, you can do edit profile, um, and that will all be tied in with, with Lifter as well. So yeah, we're going to we're going to go to town on it and make sure that we cover everything that we can <laughs> with Lifter for sure. That's awesome. That's super exciting. And uh, I love the re user registration stuff because, um, you know, not everybody just comes to a site and maybe buys a course or a membership right away. Right. Maybe they need to come in through a, a user registration form or whatever. Like it's, uh, there's so many different ways you could, you could use that. Yeah. And all the, um, our post manage. So we, we have another, add-on, which is a post management add-on, which enables you to create posts, um, you know, any kind of custom post type you want and the user management. And both of those add-ons are also tied in with ACF, toolset, pods, um, and Metabox as well. So we, uh, if, you, if you have a custom post type that you want to create and you've got some ACF custom fields associated with that, you can literally go into our templates, choose your post type from the template library, click on it and it will build you a form. And that will include all the standard post fields that you would expect, like title, excerpt, um, slug, you know, the usual fields that you see on a post. And it will actually create fields for all the custom fields that you have in ACF, Metabox, Toolset and Pods as well. Um, and that's fully bi-directional too. Um, and those, again, those forms aren't fixed. You can remove fields, remove mappings, add fields, um, it's fully responsive. So we're actually one of the only form plugins that has a fully responsive layout editor, which means you can change the layout per breakpoint, a breakpoint being, you know, the kind of the width of the screen or device that you're using. Um, so it's, it's totally flexible and you can build pretty much anything you want with it. That's awesome. What's in the future for WS form? Like, where are you going with it? And you know, what's next? You want more? <laughs> well, it sounds like it, it does a lot. I'm just curious. Like, yeah, I, I think um, so. One of the things we are working on right now is um, we want to. We're kind of waiting a little bit with some of the new starting stuff that's in the block editor in, in WordPress. Yeah, so we want to bring some of that forward into into WS form. Um, that a lot of that's still in beta, so we just want to wait until that kind of calms down um, and we're clear on where the starting is going with WordPress and in terms of the the block editor, but. Um, styling is a big thing that we want to put a lot of focus on um, and just make that easier for people. So right now you can obviously change, you know, fonts and background colors and padding and things like that. A lot of our developers will use some custom CSS for like, uh, for modifying that. Yeah. If we can bring that into the, the block editor itself, that would be, be awesome. Um, we originally worked with the customized tool because that's kind of where we were. Uh, where we were going. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, that's now becoming less and less important. Uh, they're, they're bringing in that starting into the actual blocks themselves. So that's something that we're working on right now, yeah. Um, and then also, um, I want to do some more visual stuff with it. So being able to take, you know, submissions. Uh, at, at the moment, most people will just push submissions into a post if they want to present them and then just use custom um, PHP coding, like get posts or WP query to show those posts. Um, or they'll use a standard template They'll use like an archive template to do that. But I think it would be nice to have some kind of visual stuff that we can do with submissions, maybe for um, polling and, and things like that, like pie charts and uh, other graph uh, features. So there, there's a couple of ideas there, some of the stuff that we're going with. But uh, a lot of the time it's, you know, new integrations that are coming out, new products that are coming out. We've just recently did an integration with um, Cloudflare's Turnstile product, which is a, a new capture product. Um, which I really like because it's accessible. Um, it's, you don't have to like click on all the traffic lights to, to get yeah. through the, the spam filter. It just does it all. Um, I, I don't know how it works. There's some kind of AI going on there that detects if you're a human or not. Um, but that one I like is it's accessible. There's no need for the user to interact with it. It just says yes or no, and that can be invisible as well. So they launched that in beta, I think, a week ago. We've already got an integration for it. And um, so you could use recapture, H capture, or turnstile on WS form now. So it's keeping up with the industry, basically. 
you know, what, what new toys are coming out and what can we integrate with and what's the demand? So we're always listening to our customers. That's really where the, how we steer the product. I'm sure, you know, you guys do too. Um, feedback through customer support. We have a feature request page on our site where people can go and say, hey, this would be a cool feature and people can vote on that as well. So um, it's really about listening to the customer and giving them what they're asking about. Uh, as opposed to what I'm necessarily interested in. Um, but yeah. That's how that. the best products are built. Like yeah. they'll, they'll yeah. literally pull it out of you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Could you, uh, I know it took me a while to get it. So, um, but could you explain some of the form terminology to someone who's maybe newer to forms? Like what is a repeater and why do we want one of those? Yeah. So um Usually on a form, you're just going to have a set of standard fields that just stick there. You're going to have your first name, your last name, maybe a, an inquiry uh, field. With a repeater, let's just say, for example, you wanted to have a form where you could put in a guest list of people coming to an event. So uh, with a repeater, you could have maybe first name, last name, perhaps age, and you could make that a repeater. So they could add a new row to that repeater. So you, The user on the front end is is increasing the, num the number of inputs. Yeah, yeah. So they can dynamically increase the number of fields on that form, um, i.e. the number of rows uh, for the guests. Uh, other people use it for maybe an order form. So you may have, you know, a drop down list of here's the products, the quantity, and maybe a price and subtotal. And they can use that repeater to add new rows to that, to that order. Um, and then those repeaters can be used, and actually, you know, they tie in with our integration. So for example, if you've got a custom post, and you've got an ACF repeater, we can actually push that form data into an ACF repeater. So it will appear um, carbon copy basically from the form to, to what you see on the post. Um, so yeah, that's basically what a repeater is. We call them repeatable sections. So you, we, we have sections and within the sections you have fields and you can just say, yep, I want this section to be a repeat. It's just a checkbox. So that's, you know, Another thing that we've tried to do is just make that functionality work. Um, other form plugins, you have to write reams of code to get it to get it to work. Uh, ours is just a checkbox. Uh, and conditional logic works within that. You know, there's an, another term, conditional logic. That was logic. my next question. You anticipated <laughs> that. So what, what can people do with conditional logic and what is it? Oh, yeah. Conditional logic is making your form interactive. So based upon what people are typing in um, or maybe even... The page that they're on and, and um, values that relate to the page that you're on, you can make conditional logic do different things. So, an example may be a simple example, maybe you have a form with a bidding and a shipping address, and you may want a checkbox to show that shipping address. Um, you see, you may have a checkbox that says, Hey, um, do you want to ship this to a different address? And if they check that, we can then show that shipping section. So, that's conditional logic would be used for that. So, we would say something like, if that checkbox is checked, then show this particular section. If not, hide the section. So conditional logic is typically an if, that's the, the condition, and then you have a then and an else. So the then will be, okay, yeah, if that condition's met, we'll do this, and the else is otherwise we'll do something else. Um, our conditional logic is uh, quite frankly ridiculous, what you can do with it. Um, well, let me put you on the spot then, because I don't know the, if the answer is yes or not. But yeah. some people want to make these um, like personality quizzes, like yeah. where if they enter this answer, they, they, they like this rock star and this cat, then yep. like what person, what, who are you or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is yeah, that you possible? Can do that. yeah. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. Okay. So, because, so, um, a lot of form plugins out there, they'll, they'll have a field, and then within that, there'll be a condition that says, if if this value here equals this, then show this field. Mm -hmm. um, I call that field-centric conditional logic. Ours is form-centric conditional logic. So yeah. you've got the whole, whole form to play with. So for example, you can say, if um, the form, the, sec the tab, the section, or the field is doing something, then do any number of different things that you want. So, you know, you could say, if the answer to this question is A, and the answer to this question is B, and the answer to this question is C, then show this. Yeah. Um, but you could also use that to maybe increment score somehow. You know, so, okay. and then you could say, if this like has the IQ test. Score, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing, yeah. 
Um, so it's it's very very flexible. You, you know, you can go so far as we have this demo on our WooCommerce site, which is WooCommerce.wsform.com, which is like a T-shirt customizer. Okay. Um, and that looks. We actually use our conditional logic on that to look at the brightness of the color that you've chosen, and based upon the color, it will then change the text on the T-shirt from black to to white and white to black. Um, so you can. There's all kinds of stuff that you you can do with that. Um, you can check whether fields are validated. You can check whether the value is greater or less than something. And we're also tied in with things like mouse events as well. So you can even do stuff like if this person does a mouse over event um, on a field, do a save in the background or anything, anything you want to do. Or if they click on this button, then run some PHP on the server side. Yeah. So there's there's a great deal that you can do with the conditional logic and, and make the form um, interactive. What about for the 55 plus field types? I mean, I think people think of short text, long text, maybe yeah. an email address or something, a number. Yeah. What what are some field types that people may not even realize they could <laughs> add to a form? Yeah, so we've got all of the core HTML5 field types in there. So you've got things like a progress bar, you've got rain sliders, um, and then we've got some more custom fields as well that um, people ask for. Things like rating fields. So you can, like for a testimonial or, or like a review kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can choose, you know, how many stars you want. You can even change the star character if you want to do smiley faces or whatever you want to do, or what colors you want. Um, that effectively is like a number field in the background. So you can then use that in conditional logic. So you can say if the rating is less than five, then show a box saying, oh, you know, we're sorry we didn't meet your expectations. Give us some feedback. Um, so, yeah, you've got racing fields. We've got signature fields. We have a bunch of e-commerce fields in there as well. So you can actually build order forms with it. Uh, you can tie that in with Stripe. You can tie that in with PayPal to actually take payment online as well. Um, we have navigation fields in there. So if you're doing a multi-step form, maybe with tabs, we've got like next tab, previous tab, um, a lot of different fields for just navigating through the form and making that easier. We've got a lot of different validation options as well. You know, um, we've got things like tab validation where you can't progress to the next tab unless the current tab is validated. And you can make it so that when that next button's clicked, it'll show you all the fields that aren't validated to, to help the user through that process. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of field types in there. And some of the add-ons add additional field types as well. So... For example, our WooCommerce integration, um, what that does is it adds fields for quantity, for the add to cart feature, for the cart total, for subtotal. And, you know, we just, you know, one very simple example, sometimes people want to put the add to cart button above the, the, uh, the price and things like that. Okay. So you can do that with this, this feature. You can actually move the components around. If you, if you add an add to cart button, to our format, it'll actually hide the WooCommerce add to cart button by default to enable you to move that around wherever you want. Uh, and that just behaves like a regular add to cart button. So um, yeah, I mean, I could go on for hours about the, the different field types that we have. <laughs> and then, you know, one of the cool field types that we do have, obviously for like selects, check boxes and radios, yeah. um, you want to be able to control the, the list that is, is, is shown, the list of items. But um, with ours, you can actually drag a spreadsheet into that select field, and then you can map which columns you want. So, for example, the label that's shown to the user, you can choose which column will be used for that. You can choose which column will you be, be used for the value that actually gets submitted for the form. Um, and you can even pull out additional columns based upon the selection they've made. So if they choose a particular product from a select dropdown, you could then show elsewhere on the form the width and the height of the selection that they've made. So it, it kind of does look up. It's almost like an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheet. Um, and you can populate that select actually with a Google Sheet if you want. So we, we have a thing called data sources that lets you pull in data into that field. And you can pull that data from Google Sheets, from even from a, a PHP filter. So you can fully customize how that looks. What are some of your... Uh, pro add-ons that are the most popular? Is it people like connecting to email marketing tools or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would say probably the most popular ones we have are the post management and the user management. We have a lot of people okay. wanting to create users and create post content. Um, and then it'll what's be- an example, like, What's an example post management? Like what's something, like somebody making a directory listing or something? Yeah, 
Yeah, so maybe maybe they're creating a directory of businesses, for example, and yeah. they built some custom fields out. So they probably use something like um, CPT UI, right, to create a custom post type. And then they would use ACF to then add some fields for that, like business uh, address, maybe their logo, um, any other number of fields that they would want for their business. And then the post management add-on would be used to create a form to populate that. Yeah. Um, and when the post is created, you can say that I want that post to be associated with the user that's logged in. Right. Uh, and it'll, it'll actually create posts against that user. So yeah, that's an example of, the post management stuff. The user management is, you know, register, edit profile, forgotten password and things like that. And then after those, it would be the integrations. It would be things like MailChimp, it's very popular. Um, we have a PDF add-on as well, which is quite popular. So that's actually convert, so converting a form submission into a PDF. Um, What's the actually. use case for that? Like, uh, We have people that have these quite complex PDF forms that they've already got, and they want to use a form to populate that. So okay. they'll build that out in HTML um, and then it'll do like an HTML to PDF conversion. Um, some people just, they just want a PDF attachment on, on their emails for some reason, right. I guess, because they, at the end of the day, I suspect that it's coming out of the printer and someone's putting it in a filing cabinet <laughs> still yeah. to this day, you know? Um, so uh, yeah, that, that's, that's quite popular as well. But um, as you can see, there's, there's a lot of different integrations on there. Some of those integrations are, part of the field as well, like um, Google Places, for example. So that's a field that you can pull onto the form and someone can start typing out an address partly and it will then give you suggestions on the address. And then when they click on address, that will fill out the address part of the form. So you've got kind of the autocomplete address functionality there. Um, and that can even pinpoint it on a map as well. So uh, yeah, there's uh, there's... A lot of plugins there. I'd say the email kind of marketing integrations are the most popular in the CRM integrations for sure. That's awesome. Um, uh, what was this other thing I saw here? It was your, uh, you had a bunch of examples. What did you call them? Uh, is that the template library? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, tell us about that. Yeah, so we have, uh, there's over a hundred different templates in WS form to get you started with a form. So we've got everything from your usual contact us form. We have surveys in there. We've actually got integration with the WordPress GDPR functionality as well, which a lot of, a lot of people don't realize is actually there. Um, but in WordPress, you can, if somebody, you know, if you, if you want to be GDPR compliant, um, people need to be able to make data erasure requests and data export requests. And WordPress right. has functionality built in for that. So we have some form templates for initiating that process that you can just put on a page and people can just put, type in their email address and it will trigger that process. And I think there's a bit of uh, email back and forth that goes on with WordPress with that, with that feature. Um, and then you've got stuff like calculated fields. So we've got some demos in there for like building a mortgage calculator, a loan calculator, um, just showing you how all of that kind of stuff can be built. And yeah. then when you install the add-ons, uh, like post management, you're going to get templates for every single custom post type you have. If you install Salesforce, it's going to give you templates for all the objects that you have. So mm -hmm. the template library just grows and grows and grows, just based upon the, the content that you've got. If you have the Google Sheets add-on, it will actually list all the sheets that you have in Google Drive. Um, you just click on one of those, it builds a form for you. When they submit the form, it will start putting rows into that Google Sheet. So um, yeah, the template library there is just to get people started. We have a bunch of demos in there as well that show you some of the more complex stuff like the Google Places Lookup, uh, color selectors. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's also, with the WooCommerce integration, um, the WooCommerce integration is pretty cool. You just go to a product, you click on the WS form tab on the left-hand side under your product details, say, yep, I want to customize this, this product, and it will give you a bunch of templates you can work with. So things like product configurators, uh, color swatches, multi-step forms. You can choose one of those templates to, to get yourself started, or you can start from a blank form. So there's more templates in there. <laughs> so yeah, it, uh, it keeps going. That's awesome. Mark, this is incredible. He's at wsform.com. He's got a Lifter integration if you're a Lifter LMS user. So go check that out. Yeah. Any other final words for the people who are either beginners at forms or advanced users? 
or just general WordPress folks, any, any final words for the people? Yeah, I mean, I would say if you want to check us out and try us out, we've got a demo on the site. You can just click on there at the top right hand side, click on demo. We've got a fully working demo that you can play around with. We and you know, if you if you want to build just a, a basic contact us form, we have a light edition as well. So um, we've got a light edition which has all the spam features we just spoke about. You know, the new Cloudflare turnstile field is in there. Um, so I'd definitely, yeah, check check that out and, and give it a go. All right. Well, that's Mark from wsform.com. Thanks for coming on the show. We'll yeah, have to do you, it again Chris. sometime. Absolutely. Let's do it. And that's a wrap for this episode of LMS Cast. Did you enjoy that episode? Tell your friends and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And I've got a gift for you over at lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Go to lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Keep learning, keep taking action, and I'll see you in the next episode.